Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to explore with you an idea I had in the bath this morning. <laughs> um, the idea I had was about creating sort of polymetric melodies using uh, a rather short stepped sequence but then step counts of varying lengths to modify the individual notes in that. And I kind of played around with it as soon as I got out of the bath just to check to see if this would work as a concept. But before really diving into it, I thought it would be fun to create a video and explore it together. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the note effects, load up an arpeggiator. And um, I think I've already got a MIDI note drawn. Okay, I've just drawn lo one long C note here. And because I'm now not sequencing things in the grid, they're being sequenced from outside, we have the possibility to... I've already set it. Let's set this to 10. We can now have polyphonic voices. If I were to try and add a gates module triggering things in the grid, gates don't work unless you're on mono. So I've put this to 10 and we're using this as our gates and this is our pitch information. So if I listen now, we now have just a long ringing C. But if I were to change the pitch on things... We now have that delicious overhang of previous notes. Um, and for the sake of uh, demonstrating this in the simplest way possible, I'm going to bring this down to just three steps. Because three is really the optimal number to make changes that uh, feel as though there's, there's, there's randomization happening, but at the same time, it repeats enough, uh, it repeats quick enough that you seem to form a pattern out of it. And uh, what I'd really like to do is for in this pattern to be able to is to have some sort of rand uh, some sort of modulation happening to the pitch of these individual steps that happens at a different rate to the amount of steps in the pattern. Um, and first of all, I'm just going to take a pitch in module just in case we want to modify the pitch of things later. And let's use let's just use C major pentatonic as always. No, in fact, let's not. Let's use whatever this is. I don't know whether that's C sharp pentatonic or whole whole half no um okay cool so we've got our pitch control here and this now means that we can control the pitch of things there and it will uh, translate into the grid quantized now i'm going to take a steps module in fact i'm going to take two of them and first of all if i make this three steps and we start from the beginning if i were to modulate the pitch of this first one up 12 which will be up or down 12 and I make a change to this first step, you'll see that it's because the, the, the step count is three and we have three notes here, it means that we're not really getting much interest, you know, we're not, we're not really getting anything too exciting. But if I were to change this to two steps, or four, or five, or six, or less so six, but a number that is different to the step amount, you'll start to see, even with just one note change here, That polyrhythmic melody is, is quite delicious. It's really fantastic. On this second step, so I'm going to set this to four. And instead of touching the middle one, which I'm just going to let stay at C sharp, I'm going to touch the, I'm going to bring up the second or the third voice. And uh, because this is four steps, if I make a few changes here, you'll see again that it takes a few cycles before that even goes through. In fact, let me just change one note here. As I start to change some of these other notes, maybe let's change this. Really cool. So why not try five steps as well? Because that will add an even even greater deal of complexity to the pattern. Because we've got a two um, a two step melodic sequence with a five step melodic sequence that's cycling at a rate of three steps because basically it will play this note it will miss these two and then it will play that note and then it will miss these two and play that note and once you start again to get to five it will play this note skip these two play that one skip these two play that one so it's sort of cycling within the pattern but if you it, it, as i said before it's got that kind of um, it's got that sense to it that it doesn't feel like total randomness. But here's where the exciting part comes in. With the steps module, we can just click the dice and we 
can just find a new melody. Ooh, quite cool. Okay, so let's play with these steps modules in some other ways to maybe skip some steps occasionally. So I'm going to take another steps module. And uh, in fact, first of all, let's just play with this decay setting. Because it would be quite nice to be able to make some notes short and some notes long. So if I start modulating this up a little bit, um, in fact, I can bring that a little bit more because I doubt, because we're going to get um, modulation happening on both sides of it. If I now press dice, sounds cool, but we've got some very sharp changes there. And if we use this little um, smoothing uh, knob, this will basically mean that instead of being totally straight, it will fade into it. Cool. And we can just dice that. change the melody up. Really cool. Just make a couple of changes to the sound of this. Put, put some retro colour. Bit of wobble. Let's maybe spread it a bit. Add a bit more length to these. Maybe a bit of delay. And of course we can skip steps as well. So we could take um we could take before we take the skip step, let's occasionally if I bring these gates down, you notice that we don't get any notes at all. So what we could do is take um oh, we could randomly at a rate of sixteenth notes. Um, and jaggedly, we could randomly um, play no notes on this one and randomly play no notes on this one. And this will give us a slight bit of um, bit of variation of whether or not we get note. That's quite cool. Let's do something more with the steps. So let's take this steps module and let's set this to 12. Oh, that's another thing as well, is that on this... Um, length change, we've got obviously a quite defined pattern happening over 16 steps. If we were to change that to now 12, we now have something that's a little bit more, um, a little bit more complex. Let's add a bit of warmth to the signal. Okay, that sounds quite cool. Let's quickly randomize these steps again. That's quite nice. And of course that middle note isn't changing. We could also add um, maybe a slightly simpler pattern, so we could do six steps, because this um, this now won't change um, every time. And let's change the pitch of this by 12. Let's do 12 steps. Okay, nice. Um, now let's use these uh, step modules here to play with the gate length because again that will sometimes, and just, no, instead of gate length, let's do the skip step because that will occasionally skip a step and if that happens we'll start on the next one. So let's bring this up. In fact, no, let's use the, let's use the random again. Let's take another one of these guys. Cool. Very nice indeed. And again, if we were to bring this number five steps down to four, we can make something a little bit more contained, but still with that element of complexity.
do is another steps module here. Set this to maybe 10. And we'll keep that smoothing on to play with the skew. So using these um, polymeter uh, steps modules, you can create some really cool results. We've got a 12 step there, a 10 step here. Let's do something that's nine steps and see what we can control on here. Let's maybe do a little bit of the fold. And you can use these random things for, for like the skip step, or you could use the steps, but obviously the steps will eventually return to the original value. Put a random module here as well, make sure that it's not on bipolar, and maybe set this to plus one. That's occasionally giving us notes that are above. really cool. We could do one that occasionally makes it go down an octave as well. Very cool. We could put a lag module after the pitch. Take another steps module here and see if we can't add a bit of wobble into what's happening. Let's do this at something longer. Let's go for like uh, 14 steps. Randomize the dice. Oh, I quite like that. If we were to add a uh, note pitch shifter before this, then maybe change the, the root note of it. So currently we're on a C sharp. Let's go. Let's take a steps module here and make this just two steps, but we'll do this set to bars. So let's bring this down three. Try a different key. Let's go for our classic C major pentatonic because I think that will give us some, some nice warm results. And uh, for the sake of it, let's just put. Um, let's also just take a little organ here and do a do some sort of offbeat sub thing. Really cool. So of course there is randomness involved, but at the end of the day, the melodic pattern is being generated by being uh, almost a polymetered step sequence. Let's bring the retro transformer up into this. Let's change this up a bit. Of course, any of these notes which are set to the middle will just be that root note. 
so don't be afraid to leave some in the middle. Very cool. What else could we do? We could also add maybe a smooth LFO that um, set this to a bar. This could maybe bring the entire pitch of the second note up, maybe five notes. Uh, turn that off bipolar, maybe. And of course, if we do that at a different ratio than like a bar, we'll go for three quarters of a bar. Let's do this at 1.25 of a bar. Make the pitch of the second one go up an octave. Very cool. Very nice. What if we wanted to add a bit of swing to it? Let's just see what happens if we were to... Ooh, that's quite cool. Stop it. Just add a quick drum loop to it. Why are we getting no sound? Ah, oh, of course. Anyways, that's a, a fun little way to create uh, interest um, in rather simple melody. Bearing in mind, we are just starting with three-step arpeggiator count. And just by doing these little variations to it, we can create some really cool little patterns. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today. But I do hope that this video has been fun and entertaining. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like and subscribe and smash that notification button if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. In the meantime, happy Monday and happy creating!